All right, well, the Aussie Financial Index uh, hitting more than a 12-month high on Tuesday for all the latest action. Uh, let's welcome back Marcus Droger from Shore and Partners. Marcus, good to talk to you on this uh, Tuesday afternoon. So uh, how are you seeing the market at the moment? Yeah, good afternoon. Look, it's, uh, there's a lot going on, isn't there, in the mm. market itself. The index, not that, that, not that flash. I mean, it was up uh, over 60 points now, down around 35 points up or half a percent. But look, you know, we've had some very interesting things going on in the US. The, the, the Dow hitting all-time highs, settling a little bit uh, below that. But the NASDAQ uh, continues to get belted around and there's uh, a lot of selling and rotation obviously going out of a lot of those stocks. Although it should be noted in the S&P 500, the top five tech stocks make up around 22% of the market capitalisation of the S&P 500. So S&P 500 was off last night. But we don't have a huge tech uh, sector here. So we've, uh, we've sort of moved on and we're doing, we're doing pretty well. We have seen quite a bit of continued selling going on in the uh, information technology sector. Uh, particularly stocks, uh, market darling stocks like uh, Afterpay, which not so long ago were up at around $160. Today they went down below $100. They've been bought back up, but still down around 5%. So um, I think there's a lot of pain and joy going on there, depending on which side of the transaction you're on uh, with Afterpay. But we're seeing that rotation continue or the thematic around that uh, interest going back into the banks. Uh, just look at ANZ and uh, NAB and Westpac. They all gave some quarterly trading updates not so long ago and they've had some really sharp moves up in the last month or so. I think ANZ's up over 20 percent and NAB and Westpac in the last month up 10 percent. So a lot of money going back into the banking sectors. There is going to be an expectation that come uh, May when they report there will be some dividends flowing through uh, above what we saw previously. Uh, resources and, or materials and energy a little bit mixed there. Uh, Rio and Oz Minerals quite strong. Uh, the rest a little bit down. So uh, uh, as I said, mixed mixed in there. And other than that, uh, you've got Focus Group today, which uh, the board has unanimously accepted a uh, bid of $5.50 from uh, Macquarie Group and Aware Super. It will be done under a scheme of arrangement and uh, has to go through the uh, formal court process. But at $5.50, that stock a year ago was trading at around $2. So uh, shareholders must be delighted there. So uh, uh, some, some interest mm. there and a whole lot going on in the insurance space as well. Yeah, indeed. Well, we might as well stick with insurance. Uh, very quickly, it looked like IAG might have been in trouble with a trading hold, but we've since found out that all's well. What were you thinking at the time? Well, look, it's very interesting, isn't it? I mean, you've got uh, IAG, very large general insurer, uh, sold off uh, uh, quite a large chunk of its business to Tokyo Marine back in 2019, and it's got caught up in a lot of rumour mongering about its uh, its exposure or net in, in insurance exposure to trade uh, trade credits and that's the business that Greensill Group's been involved in. They've had a lot of publicity lately about uh, their, uh, their insurance coverage. Are they solvent? Are they not? And IAG got caught up in that. But uh, so first of all they went into a trading pause. That looked a bit scary. Then they went into a trading halt and so we thought oh, oh here we go. But uh, shortly thereafter, they actually came out with a statement. It was only a one-pager, and they basically said that that uh, exposure that they had to a group called BCC, a Sydney uh, underwriting agency group that used to write a lot of these policies, that 50% that they owned in that, uh, they had sold as part of the deal to Tokyo Marine back in uh, June 2019. So. Uh, all is mm. apparently well, so yeah, uh, they're all right. okay. They've come back on trading. <laughs> we can breathe a sigh of relief. They're down around 1%, but uh, we saw the other insurers go up, uh, Suncorp and QBE, maybe on expectation that IAG uh, might have been a little bit more trouble than what they thought. So uh, anyway, uh, a sigh of relief for IAG and IAG Indeed. shareholders as well, obviously. All right, Marcus, let's just uh, finally turn to nickel. This is a really interesting space at the moment, given uh, certainly nickel, uh, the, the price has collapsed uh, somewhat. But Western Areas uh, announcing a 100 uh, 
million dollar capital raising. So interesting to see how that goes, particularly and, and part of this issue with the price at the moment is that China's Xinzhan Holdings has announced that it's producing a battery grade form of nickel, a low grade form, uh, and that's actually threatening to flood the nickel market. Mm. So that's putting that pre downward pressure on the price. Yeah, look, there's a, there's a lot been going on in nickel and the demand is still very strongly there as, as the whole world moves towards electric vehicles. You need nickel as part of the uh, battery configuration, etc. So uh, a group such as Western Areas is a pure uh, nickel concentrate, sulphide concentrate uh, uh, producer and they've got a real niche in that space. The results the last uh, couple of periods haven't been that flash and they've been sold down a little bit. But today they went uh, to the market and said they wanted to raise 100 million, 85 million as a placement at $2.15. Uh, 85 million would be done as a uh, underwritten placement and 15 million would be done uh, as a share purchase plan available to retail shareholders. Now they basically said that money will be used for uh, the Odessa uh, concentrate uh, mine that they're going to do and they need the mon money for funding of that. They'll have that up and running in 2023 and it'll be producing I think something like 14,600 14, metric tonnes of uh, nickel concentrate. So that's going to be uh, a pretty good project for them if they can get that going. They are also going to spend money on their um, Forestania and uh, Gawler West and Cosmos uh, uh, facilities as well to also boost the exploration in that. So I think that'll be done very easily. The last traded price was $2.34 and uh, they should be back on market tomorrow. But uh, it's a good space and I think investors are very keen to, to put the money into that space. So we're going to see, uh, we're yeah. gonna see a, little, a bit more action going on there and I think you'll find that uh, that uh, that raising will be will be well received uh, in in as the market progresses on that. So uh, well, as a good we keep story saying, we love and, companies uh, that watch make this things. space on nickel. <laughs> yep, indeed. All right, hey Marcus. Well, we love we love we love we love companies. Yeah, that produce <laughs> and make and sell. We love yeah. real yeah. ones. And, and 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 with a and, and with a and with a positive cash flow. We love That's right. We just companies love. that make things and make money. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Marcus, thanks very much for joining us. I'm sure, partners. Yeah. <laughs>